going to be a big one, Hilda. This is probably the biggest and loudest crowd we've had in some time here. <laughs> Welcome to the show. We got a great one for you. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. What do you think of the uh, the new colors, huh? Pretty good, huh? Patriotic. Hey, there's a really a trendy term going on right now in the food world, and it's called fusion. But basically, if you really think about it, what it really is is blending ethnic styles and ingredients different combinations together, making it sort of a new one, if you will. And truthfully, I got to tell you, this has really been going on for a long, long time, even though that it's getting popular right now in restaurants around the country. This fusion or mixing cross cultures has been going on, like I said, for a long time. So I said to myself, so how much fun would it be to kind of look at the impact of crossing borders, right? So that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to combine the cuisine of Peru and Japan, and we're going to create a wonderful ceviche made with scallops, first of all. And then there's a long history between Vietnamese and French, and we're going to take those combinations, and I'm going to show you a little salad with crab meat and asparagus that we're going to do. And then gone is a Portuguese colony in India. Them Portuguese guys are everywhere, right? <laughs> it's actually this salt cod roll or a salt cod ball that we're going to do that I'm going to show you. That's really, really a terrific combination. And then there's Indonesian influence on Dutch cooking. So we're going to take those combinations. I'm going to show you a very interesting cake that has a lot of layers and spice and, well, we'll get to that later on. And I gotta be truthful, I'm excited because Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Latin Band. <laughs> All right, hang on, get ready to sail on a food adventure because we're crossing cultures right here on Emerald Live. <laughs> All right, how you doing over here, folks? Very good. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Great, great. See, these aren't the cheap seats after all, Mom, huh? <laughs> how you guys doing, all right? <laughs> Ladies, how you doing? We're going to start with um, just really quickly about how different foods and different techniques have really influenced uh, different uh, foods that, uh, that are happening there, whether it's this Peruvian dish that we're going to do, or later on I'm going to show you about how the, how the Dutch and... Indonesia's kind of made a combination with food, and certainly the Vietnamese and French. And I think back about years ago, just thinking about uh, in the early 80s, sort of being labeled as sort of New New Orleans cooking, uh, and why I did that. And basically it was, you have Louisiana, you have two main foundation styles of cooking. You have Cajun or Acadiana, which is the country style food. And then you have the city, style food, which is influenced from the port, a little more cultures than Acadiana. So that's the Creole part of it. And then adding, say, ingredients and techniques of Vietnamese, uh, because uh, maybe about 10, 15 years ago, the Vietnamese people started settling in, taking over a lot of the fishing ports and working them and influencing the food there. And that's sort of the same way when you look at this first dish that we're going to do. This is a Peruvian ceviche. Ceviche's been in Peru for a long, long time, but uh, with the influences of Japan and the Japanese, their style of eating fish, uh, eating a lot more raw fish and what they do to that, how they treat that and respect that, um, you get that sort of pocket of food, and it keeps it extremely, extremely interesting and exciting, which is what's going on in America right now. There's a lot of exciting food. So I'm going to begin showing you, first of all, 
the ceviche itself. And I'm going to start with rice wine vinegar, which would be a, instead of the typical citrus of limes or lemons or oranges, we use rice wine vinegar. And then uh, a little bit of sake or mirin. And then chili peppers, which is the, uh, the spice and the heat uh, that is used in that sort of cuisine. And then real simple, just a little bit of salt. And I'm using regular salt, not a sea salt, which you could use, or a kosher salt. And that's basically the dressing for the ceviche. What's going to cook it is going to be the acidity in the vinegar, in the rice wine vinegar, as opposed to, I said, a typical citrus. Now, what I'm doing this here is with scallops. Fresh is the key. Doesn't have to be expensive, but it has to be high quality, particularly when you're talking about marinating fishes or shellfish, eating raw fish, as in the Japanese culture. It has to be extremely fresh and handled with kit gloves. And I think we do a pretty good job in this country by doing that. We're going to take some beautiful sea scallops, okay? What do they smell like? They smell sweet. If they smell fishy, huh, that little antenna should go up, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, when I go to the fishmonger, I don't hesitate at all. If I'm going to buy a piece of fish or if I'm going to buy a whole fish, I want to smell it or at least get close to it. Seriously, I mean, you have that right. I mean, they haven't put no signs up yet in the grocery store that says, please stay away from smelling the fish, <laughs> you know? So I'm going to do some thin slices of these scallops, sort of this way here. Removing the abductor, that little muscle that comes from the separation of the shell. And then what we're going to do is, basically, we're going to take the scallops and marinate these in this rice wine, chili, a little bit of salt mixture right here. And 30 minutes, 30 minutes, and that will actually cook and be ready. So what we're going to do is put it in the ice box, cover it 30 minutes. This is how uh, it looks right here. After 30 minutes, you can see that they're already starting to get, just by the feel of them, you can see how they're starting to get, they, they're getting cooked. That's what 30 minutes is going to do. Now, simply, see the difference in color here? Can we get that, Buck? Now, simply, what we do is very simple. It's the good part of things. And that is, is that what I like to do is take a little bit of cucumber and we just sort of fan out some cucumber like this in a circle. And if you want to seed the cucumbers, that's fine as well. So we'll seed them. Bless you. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of green onion now and add the green onion in there and a few more of julienne of either sweat, uh, a sweet or a hot pepper, okay? Either sweet or hot pepper. And then just to finish this, to show you how simple this is, you just take a little bit of the ceviche like this, of scallop, okay? Set it in sort of the center, like this. Beautiful little appetizer. I like to finish mine with a little bit of toasted black sesame seeds. And believe it or not, this is the Japanese again. I take a little bit of good soy sauce just right at the end. Oh, now this thing's like clogged up. <laughs> just, when you, just when you thought it was safe, Doc. It's, it's clogged up now. And I just take a little bit of soy sauce, a few drops like this, and basically, folks, there you have it, a little Peruvian ceviche of scallops right there, okay? See how simple that is? All right. Hey, we're crossing the globe here, doing a little cross-cultural cooking tonight. When we come back, we're going to kick it up another notch. Stick around. <laughs> Thank you.
Teddy on drums. We got the birthday boy, Charles, in the house. Yes, indeed. All right, now we're going to kick it over to uh, a little Vietnamese and French combo. Influences of both. Here's what we're going to start with. The classic asparagus. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a little salt into this water. When you're blanching vegetables, particularly green leafy vegetables, it's good to add a bit more salt. It'll bring out more of the natural color and vitamins inside of that, like spinach, broccoli, asparagus. So I just took pencil asparagus, cut them up, not so much the ends. We're just going to blanch these, okay? That's the first thing we're going to do. So while that's blanching, we're going to make a quick little dressing. We're going to take a little bit of warm water. It has to be warm because I want to dissolve some sugar. This is a little Vietnamese technique. So warm water, sugar, we want this to sort of dissolve. Then, once it dissolves, mm, we're going to add some nok mom. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> well, it's this stuff here. It's a Vietnamese fish sauce that you can buy in stores. It's pretty salty. So that's why I'm doing the salt-sugar combo, you know what I mean, with the little water. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add lime juice and a little rice wine vinegar and of course you got to have some garlic in there you know what i mean <laughs> and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add some heat so i'm going to add just some really some crushed red pepper to this right here like that okay you should let this sit for at least 30 an hour 30 minutes because it's gotta, you gotta get, let the flavors come out. So there's pot number two. Pot number three, beside blanching these asparagus, see how the green color came out now? Oh yeah, babe. <laughs> There's a great noodle. This is rice stick noodles, okay? I'm always on like the hunt for like the perfect noodle, you know? And these are really, really cool. But what you got to do, they're simple to work with. You got to let them soak first, OK? Like a lot of uh, the Orient, Vietnamese, Japanese, et cetera, they believe in rinsing their noodles, their rice, a lot of times to get a lot of that unnecessary starch out. So what we've done is we've taken that and soaked it just in some sort of warm water. But they're not cooked. This has been about three to five minutes right now that I've had these soaked. They're not cooked, so we've got to cook those. So now what we're going to do is this. In sort of our pasta deal, they're still crunchy, even though we soaked them. But you see how cloudy the water is here? So we're going to just take any necessary starch. We're going to just now put them inside of our pasta. They're not going to take a long time now at all. So there we have that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take, like whenever you're blanching vegetables, we're going to take the asparagus and we're going to shock them right here in a little ice bath that I have. I just have a bowl that is big enough for the job with ice water inside of it. And we're going to just sort of submerge them in the ice water and let these things cool a little bit. Because this is really a sort of a cold salad that we're doing. All right, now, the rest is history. We're like on our way now. Here's what we're going to do. We've got our dressing. What we're also going to do is I've got some green onions or scallions, which they do a lot of different types of cuts for beautiful presentations. And I got some awesome lump crab meat for this dish, OK? So here's what we're going to do now. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take our chilled asparagus, drain them good. Then what we're going to do now is we're going to take the noodles. 
If you're working with one of these pans at home, folks, A, be very careful not only the steam on your hands, but also that facial steam. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want them uh, eyebrows getting too big, you know what I mean? <laughs> so what we want to do is we want to cool these noodles down, too, in sort of our ice bath like this. Let me add just a little bit more water to this. Because again, like I said, this is a cold. All right, so that wasn't so difficult. You see, it didn't take a long, long time to, to do this. Once we cool our noodles, now what we're going to do is put this baby together. And here's what we'll do. We're going to drain these really, really good. <laughs> How about some draining music, Doc? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Draining music by Doc Gibbs. All right, so now we're going to take our noodles, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take our dressing and pour that dressing right over that. Oh, a little salt. Crab meat, the green onions. I wish you could smell that knock mom stuff. It's knock mom and me right now. Really good. It's like knock knock, who's there, you know? All right, then how I serve this up, folks, for a wonderful combination of beautiful noodles asparagus with the knock mom and the crab meat deal going on here. You see that? I simply just sort of garnish this with some toasted and chopped peanuts and a little bit of cilantro leaves. I just kind of like to just kind of put some cilantro leaves like that. And there you have it, folks, a little combination. Vietnamese and French. And when we come back, another notch! Welcome back, folks. Emma Lugazzi here, crossing a lot of cultures tonight. All right, so we had the ceviche. Now we've got the crab, asparagus, and noodle. That is the Vietnamese French. Goa is part of India. Actually has a strong Portuguese population. So that's where we're going to kind of do those two cultures and ingredients and techniques and uh, do these sort of going type food, but something that's near and dear to my heart that I grew up on, which is salt cod, a Portuguese masters at preserving fish, particular salt cod. Sometimes you can buy them whole like this. Sometimes you get them in a side. I've had them and had them as many as a side this big. Just kind of have them hanging because they're cured, salt cured. You can hang them in like sort of the basement. You know, they kind of keep well. I just do mine in a refrigerator, kind of wrap it really, really good. Then when you're ready to work with it, it's uh, sort of a little, a little treat. And Hilda, my mom, thinks that you got to sort of do this rinse back and forth three, four times. I kind of agree with her. Uh, I like to do mine at least three, if not four times. What do I mean by that? Okay, so you take a piece of the salt cod. This is like really salty, but that's what they used to do to preserve it. 
Buckle ya, right? Buckle ah. Buckle ya in Portuguese. Get your own show, will you? Rough crowd. Are you Italian? That's good too. So you gotta soak this thing. And my mom sometimes uses milk. Sometimes I will as well. But you have to soak this overnight. Then you gotta drain the water. Then you gotta add it again. You gotta do this three, four times. That means three, four days, but you're only changing water. Eventually, once you get like to the third time to be safe, what I do is I'll take the salt cod and then I put it in water again and I'll steep up the temperature just until it simmers. I don't want to like make the fish just like all flake off, but this is what it looks like. Can you smell that? Fantastic stuff. I have this stuff in my veins. <laughs> so you let it cool and then we'll let it sort of drain a little bit. And for the most part now, you should have a good balance of salt, of the codfish taste, as opposed to just being all salty. So you with me so far? Okay. Now what you want to do is you want to go and flake the codfish. Again, this is, should be cool. And make sure that there's no, no, uh, bones in here. That's why I'm doing it with my hand first. Once I'm sure that there's no bones, then I'll just take a masher. Or you can do it if you don't want to do it with a masher. The other way I do it is just doing it with a couple of forks like this and you just sort of flake it. You see what I'm doing here? Now, I've taken some regular potatoes and basically now what we're going to do is just peel them, dice them, a pinch of salt, and we're going to put them on the stove and basically then we're going to cook them until they're good and fork tender and we're going to drain them and we're going to add them to this this salt cod mixture right here okay these are fantastic you want to talk about a a snack and a half all right so after you keep basically doing the whole shredding thing you want to get it really, really fine, okay? So I'm going to switch gears here for a minute. You want to get this really, really fine. Now, if we're doing bakalya, <laughs> we wouldn't be doing it that fine. We'd be doing it in sort of pieces. So this is, <laughs> this is how fine I've got it right here, okay, for these particular cakes that I'm going to do. I'm going to add some lime juice, the juice of a lime, Believe it or not, I'm going to add some turmeric, which used a lot in Indian food, as well as a little chili. Okay? I'm not going to add any salt because obviously we're using with the salt cod. Now, we're going to take those potatoes that we blanched till they were really good and fork tender, and we're going to just sort of drain these guys. And other cultures have this kind of potato and codfish combination, but not generally with turmeric or chili. We're going to drain the potatoes really, really good, and then we're going to add... It's like a petting zoo in here, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez. Unbelievable. <laughs> please, those of you... Donations are good, but leave your pets home, please, okay? I just had one that flew by my right ear. It was driving a motorcycle. So now what we're going to do is take the potato and the salt cod mixture. And you can see how it's really, really coming together like this but unusual with the spice of the chili simple and the turmeric. The turmeric's what's giving it that color. Okay, now here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna add a little pepper in here and we're gonna let this cool just sort of another minute. And then what you do, folks, is you can do these cakes or you can do them in like 
you know, like these little boulettes or little balls. And then we're going to shape these. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put them in an egg wash and then in seasoned breadcrumbs, because I don't know where you get your uh, breadcrumbs. Where I get mine, well, some of them come seasoned, right? Yeah. Italian ones, right? <laughs> So it's going to be some fried codfish balls, and I'm going to show you a wonderful little dipping sauce when we come back. Stick around. Doc Gibbs, everybody. Welcome back, folks. You're just joining us. Oh, shame on you. <laughs> Emma Lagasse here. We're uh, cooking with cross cultures here tonight, and we have one that we're doing influence the little of India, pocket of India, and Portuguese, as in codfish. Either cakes you can make them into, or little balls. They make great appetizers, great hors d'oeuvres to make. They're worth the trouble of soaking the codfish. But let me just give you one tip. I was growing up with these with my mom and my dear friend Inez. You, when you get done putting them in the, I had an egg and some milk. Put a little essence in there, some seasoning. Right? Had some breadcrumbs in here, add a little essence. Okay? <laughs> then I took the cakes after you mold them. Again, any way you want. If you're going to have boulettes or the little balls, you just shape them like that. If not, if you're going to make little cakes, you can make little cakes like this as well. Okay? And then the key is to let them go back in the ice box and get cold. If we were to fry these right now, fresh like this, they would, the potato would break down a lot. Okay? So we want them to get cold a little bit so that they can solidify. Now, one of my mom and Inez's favorite things to do with this type of thing and fish, they make what they call a sablada. And I'm going to show you how to make one, but I'm going to change it a little bit because with the season right now, a little bit of the Indian taste inside of the codfish balls with the chili and the turmeric, where it has a really great taste. I'm going to add some seeded, peeled cucumbers to the sablada, which would normally not be in there. But watch this. We're going to take crushed red pepper. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> and we're going to take some garlic, okay? <laughs> Yeah, and what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to whisk some Portuguese olive oil in here. See, so you're just kind of making like a little paste like this. Then what we're going to do now Oh yeah, doc. <laughs> What we're going to do now is we're going to take some slices of onion. Pretty thin. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of break them up and let them sit in that red pepper and that sort of marinade right there. You see what I'm doing? Okay. Now, we'll take the juice of a lemon, so the acid is also going to just kind of perk it up a little bit, the acidity in here, okay? Lots of fresh parsley. Oh, Hilda's so happy right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll get a call tonight. <laughs> All right. Then what we're going to do is add the cucumbers, okay? Now, don't go anywhere. We're going to toss this here. Little unusual sablada. Generally, also, the Portuguese, they have this pimentum wither, this crushed red pepper that's sort of in a liquid. It's like in a little vinegar and oil already. So you wouldn't have to let it steep so much. But I like it. I'm liking this steep thing here. All right, little salt. Now, Take them out of the ice box. 
your codfish balls, right? And we're going to add them right inside of the fryer here. Be careful when you're working with hot oil. 360 degrees, just regular vegetable oil. Not going to take any time. So the great thing about this kind of dish is that you can make this as a wonderful hors d'oeuvre ahead of time, even the day before. Just don't get the cakes or the balls wet, right? Then when your guests come or the family, the sablada is not going to go anywhere. It's just going to get better. Then when you're ready, you can just drop them in the oil. If you're doing this on the stove, make sure the oil is only like halfway because the oil is going to expand when you add stuff in there, okay? And then when you're ready, we just take that wonderful sablada like this. Yo, that smells and oh man, I'm telling you right now, you better get me back there. So we get that like that. See, I like to use this oil too, because now it's got like all this flavor in here. I'm getting excited. <laughs> all right, so now, the other thing that you got to remember, folks, whenever that you're frying, as soon as they come out of the oil, that's when you want to season them. I'm going to use some essence on these right here. Then you put a few of these right around. You see? That's what I'm talking about, another cross culture. You know what I mean? All right. Hey, when we come back, I got this incredible, incredible cake. I can't wait to show you. Stick around. We'll be right back. Thank you. Charles, Teddy on drums, and Dr. Gibbs. All right. What'd you think? Fantastic, huh? That's the blather. Dig in. Sometimes I cook like 20, 25 of them at one time. Just put them in my pocket. <laughs> so, you know, you kind of walk in on the subway, you got people look at you like. Then you just take out one. Oh, it's a great, beautiful snack. This um, next fusion, if you will, the spices of Indonesia and technique cooking a little sweet from Dutch. Guess way back during the spice trade. And this is an incredible cake. You're not going to believe this. Multi-layers but the technique is incredible, and the spices. Watch this. While you were getting one of those frozen things, I separated some eggs. Got the egg yolks here for the cake, and now I'm making a little meringue, sweetened with a little sugar and the egg whites, clean bowl, till you get it at a really good stiff peak. Once we get that at stiff peak, Oh, yeah, babe. Then what we're going to now do is we're going to take this off the machine and get ready to start making the cake part of the batter. And what that is there is I've got some butter in this bowl that I've gotten soft. And I want to add the bowl back here. I'm going to use the paddle for this. Get the paddle on. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start getting our butter nice and soft and creamy. Now, while that's happening, the spice thing. Cinnamon. <laughs> Clove. Mace. <laughs> Not the liquid type. 
Anise. Cardamom. Ginger. Not Marianne. Ginger. <laughs> Nutmeg. Now, you mix all of those spices together here. Now, once the sugar, once the butter gets nice and soft, I try to tell people all the time, before you start making the batter, you want to scrape down your bowl. So that way you don't have any lumps. See what I'm doing here? And the paddle. That's one of the things that will definitely guarantee you have lumps in your batter here. All right, now, going to add that. We're going to add the sugar and a technique called creaming. Pinch of salt and a little bit of vanilla. Once that happens, I tell people again, scrape your bowl down. We don't want any lumps. Now, if you want lumps, hey, go ahead. So we're going to scrape this down now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start our batter, and I'm going to show you this incredible cake. All right. Now we get that back going. Now the eggs, one at a time. Some egg music by Doc Gibbs. Now, once you get the eggs in there and incorporated, what it says is that you take this batter and you fold in the flour. All right. Well, that's what it says. I, sometimes I don't understand you know, what the difference is. I'm trying to. I've been up all night trying to figure it out. <laughs> so, now we got that part of it. Then what we're going to do, this gets all mixed in here now. Now what we're going to do is this. We're going to take this batter off. We're going to fold in the meringue to make it a lighter batter. Okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to divide the batter. We're going to divide the batter in half. So we're going to take the meringue and fold in the meringue. Then we're going to take that batter and divide it into two bowls. One bowl we're going to add all the spice to. One bowl is going to be plain. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Stick around. We'll be right back. All right, so let me show you this technique on this cake. So we fold it in the egg whites, you got the spice in one, you got the plain in the other. So again, you start with a quarter of an inch or so, turn the broiler on. This is what I did at the break, look. This is the first layer. Can you see that? You got to stay on top of it four or five more minutes. Then what you do, now you come back for a, a regular layer. Spread it around. Nice, nice. And then it goes back in the oven. This happens like this. You can, well, let me t say this. Four layers, eh. Six, not too bad. We went up to like 14. Hey, you know, we got nothing but time on our hands, you know? <laughs> Once you let it cool, you take, let it cool like any other cake, then you take a little wedge. Look at the layers. See that? Spice, plain, spice, plain. Oh, goodness. All right, what we're gonna do here is bam! We're just gonna give it a little bam like this.
serve it with a little bit of summer seasonal berries. Beautiful little sprig of mint like this. A little fusion of Indonesia and Dutch. Unbelievable cake. See the layers in that right there? I mean, look, if you want to try that. Put a, put, a, put a piece of that between your cheek and gums. Yeah, I'm going to dress it for you, but anyhow, just take a piece of that. Unbelievable cross-culture cuisines tonight. Hey, I'm Emeril Lagasse. I want to thank you all for joining me tonight.